Hi, my name is Chris Gosling. I'm the old geezer who puts together the content for Trucking TV. Yesterday I was out of the office, but I missed out seeing um, the one show on BBC One at seven o'clock where they were talking about the trucking industry. Since then I've seen it back on Catch Up on the iPlayer and I've been reading some of people's comments about what was said and what was shown on the one show. And uh, although it was really great to see a bit of exposure for the UK haulage industry, they still got quite a lot wrong. Someone I'd like to talk to again about this topic is a lady called Sam Bradley. She and her husband run a haulage business called David A. Bradley Limited, and she was telling me about the thing that rung her bell, which is when the one show asked one of the truck drivers, would you get your daughter to drive a truck? And he said, quite, quite strongly, no, thank you. So I rung up Sam, we had a chat, and here's the interview that I had with her earlier today. Okay, so this morning I'm talking to Sam Bradley, who's uh, one half of a, a, a haulage business, David A. Bradley Limited, and uh, we're talking today about the silliness that's been on TV lately, really, I guess you'd say silliness, um, on the one show, where they're talking about trucking or truck driving as a potential career. They seem to miss lots of points on that, Samantha. Yes, they did, unfortunately. I think that there is a much bigger issue, but, but that said, I think it's at least got uh, the haulage industry into the public eye and when you consider what their audience will be made up of I don't think it's going to be um, an audience that's going to be particularly interested in the haulage industry in depth but at least it is raising the profile of the haulage industry What about the one thing that I know rung all your bells um, if I had a daughter or if you had a daughter would you put her into driving a truck and um, one of the guys on the programme said no, what do you think? I would have liked them to have investigated more why he'd said no because he said it quite forcefully and he said it the way that I possibly would have said it but my two daughters aren't particularly interested if they had been then yes I would have allowed them but an old work colleague of mine she has two daughters and they both drive the trucks for the family business right so you, so so, you think for a girl a boy it's a good career yeah yeah, it, it is. Uh, we've got a, a, a friend, of, a friend of my husband, actually, a friend of mine, uh, his daughter now drives for one of the local quarry companies. Uh, she's only recently passed a test, mm -hmm. um, and she drives the tippers and some of the tanks as well. So, you know, I mean, she's only a young girl. She'll only be 20. Um, and her brother drives, too. He works for another uh, large quarry company near us. So there are younger generations coming through, but they have had access to the industry through family. If you've had no access at all, it's getting introduced to people that have probably never even touched a truck before. One of the things that I want to talk to you about, bearing in mind what you've just said and bearing in mind what the One Show was talking about, getting yeah. people into the job, um, they kind of made it sound awfully easy and pretty well paid and would you like to be a truck? Oh, yeah. Um in reality, there are lots of bits that they didn't talk about. For instance, training. For instance, to make that national average wage, they were talking about 25 to 30 grand. You have to work a little bit more than the national average hours. Um, hit me with what we need to do to get more young people in the first place interested in truck driving and then interested in taking the career up. I think, first and foremost, I think it's raising the public po profile, it is getting better facilities, it is getting, you know, you would be shocked actually at some of the places that, that, that my lads d have delivered to and they are not allowed access to facilities and health and safety is usually given as a reason. Um, in any other workplace, you would not be allowed to refuse access to facilities for your workers and I want to change that, I want that to be extended to any visiting staff as well. Right. But that's, a, that's another opinion, uh, you know. Uh, but as a girl on her own, going back 20-odd years when I was driving full-time, um, yes, it was brilliant in the beginning, but then the depths of winter set in and the long, dark days, and you spend an awful lot of time on your own. Mm. Um, for a woman, there are also, um, you know, personal uh, safety yeah. issues. And that's why I think the truck stops have got to step up to the plate. Uh, things have got to be improved vastly and very quickly if we're going to take advantage of the fact that the trucks have never been easier to drive. Women are more than capable of driving them. Um, but 
probability is just finding the, the sort of job that would suit each individual. Because nowadays, it's the same for men as women, shared childcare, um, all manner of things come into it now. Um, you know, whereas years ago I was single, I hadn't got that other issue to deal with. It was just me and the job. How about things like training, though, Sam? I mean, one of the things that really I find it quite strange in having to deal with, if you decide to go to university, then the government will rush out and give you a loan of something like 30 grand over a period of time to help you pay for your university degree. If you yeah. say, I'd like to be a trucker and get into a class one or a C, costs you, what, three grand, four grand? Oh, easy. No one, no one rushes up to you with that money and says, borrow this for a couple of years, do they? No, good point. And actually, now you've raised that, I think that maybe that's something that the government should be looking at then. It should be based on, on like a, a student loan that you start to pay it back after you start earning a certain amount. It's not a massive amount of money when you consider some of the student loans that, that can be run up. So I think that's something that needs to be raised. And that's part one of our interview with Sam Bradley. We'll be back with the second part in a couple of hours or so. So keep an eye on Trucking TV to hear more from Sam about about our industry if you like to tell us what she thinks as someone who's been a woman driver and as someone who currently runs a transport business